Hey, what's going on everyone? Back with another knife overview. Today we're going to be looking at the Microtech SOCOM Bravo. Um, this is the box that it comes with. Um, Microtech uh, across the board um, has really nice packaging. You just have this cardboard box inside. You kind of have the warranty information as well as the user guide and this closed cell foam to kind of keep it safe. Um, this Microtech SOCOM, so it features a four inch blade. It's gonna be nine and eight one hundredths overall. Uh, closed, you're looking at five and eight one hundredths of an inch. Um, the steel on here is gonna be Bowler M390. Uh, it has a flat grind. Um, this knife is actually, so it's available in a Tanto, which obviously this one is, as well as a drop point. Um, it has a bead blast finish to um, to the blade. Um, the handles here are gonna be kind of a combination of six AL4V titanium and carbon fiber. Uh, the pivot is running on bearings. So the, the action on this is absolutely phenomenal, but they do actually offer a few options as far as the pivot goes. You could either get blue or copper. This one's obviously blue um, as far as that pivot collar goes. Um, the pocket clip is going to be titanium, and the carry option is going to be right hand tip up only. The weight on this is going to be 4.67 ounces, so definitely a hefty knife, but you have to keep in mind that it is a 4-inch blade. And um, kind of the background based on uh, my research of this knife, so it was designed by Tony Marfioni, so the founder, owner of Microtech, but it is made in China by Reich Knife. Um, and you know certainly the the socom bravo so it's going to be based off of uh, marfioni custom which was turned into a collaboration with with reich and i thought it was kind of funny one of the uh one of my subscribers made the comment when i first kind of showcased this knife they were like oh yeah like you know reich was making knives while we were still trying to figure out how to pronounce riot and and that's been true I, i've been so like shocked and impressed with the the craftsmanship the machining that that went into this knife and um a little bit of a background with my history yeah with microtech knives writ large so i used to have a very large microtech collection a lot of older you know cfos halos um ludts like original ones um I kind of, I got rid of them and then took kind of like a six or seven year hiatus. Now I'm kind of back into knives and, and this is going to be my first Microtech that I've tried in, you know, the the last almost 10 years. So i um, excited to kind of go through my observations and uh, yeah, we'll see if this, this knife is right for you. All right, before we get into my overview, I wanted to go through a few comparisons of the Microtech SOCOM Bravo. Um, first, we will compare it to a McNeese PM 3.5, looks like that. Also have a Spyderco Shaman, looks like that. Uh, let's see, we'll pick up a Chris Reeve Large and Cozy, stacks up like that. And finally, we will look at our trusty Strider SMF. Looks like that. So uh, the main theme here, it's, it's definitely a, a very large knife. Um, you know, it's not going to, for, for some, it might not be appropriate for EDC. You definitely couldn't get away with carrying it in gym shorts, for instance. But I have carried this for about a week now um, pretty consistently. And, um, you know, I, I've been very impressed with it. All right, let's jump right into my observations of the Microtech SOCOM Bravo. Um, the first definitely being that just the beautiful materials that this knife is made out of. Um, certainly this this blade fuller, it kind of has a satin finish that contrasts to the, the bead blast nature of, of the blade. And kind of the, the anecdote that I came up with upon carrying this knife for a few days is, this kind of reminds me of like what a gas station knife wish, wishes that it was. Um, 
you know, you, you look at this thing and you're like, oh man, like it, it's so kind of flashy, showy, whatever. But then upon closer inspection, like this knife can back it up between the carbon fiber scales, the, you know, titanium bolster here, all of the jimping and machining that went into the backspacer. The blade is just freaking gorgeous. Um, this fuller here, I, I mean, at, you know, if you try to put this knife under a microscope, you'll just be like, yep, it, it's all there. Like it, it passes all the tests and, and that's really pretty amazing. The next observation that I had was just, just the fact that, you know, this knife and its configuration and kind of design, it is never going to be a slicing machine. Like surely you can get away with, you know, the occasional Amazon box, whatever, cutting a few things, but you know, it, it's not really made for everyday carry I wouldn't say I mean just the the sheer thickness behind the edge of this really makes it more of a collector slash enthusiast knife um you know like certainly as an example this fuller here that's cut out I'm kind of calling it like uh you know taking a core sample right so anything that I cut with this knife um you know if it's mushy squishy whatever I'm gonna have remnants of that in this fuller here and then you know, further, this backspacer, again, great machining here. We'll get into that in a minute, but you have these kind of openings here. So, I mean, it's just kind of asking, like if you use this knife as a hard use knife, which I'm sure that it would withstand anything you could throw at it, that, that's just something you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to deal with for sure. Um, the next observation that I had, and you know, we'll get right back into it. So, um, this backspacer is absolutely wild. Like I am absolute, I'm, I'm convinced that in, you know, the, the three square inches of backspacer here has more machining than most knives that I experience. It, it's almost like they were showing off and they, they knocked that out of the park. Like it, it's almost funny. It's like, you know, Reich was like, oh yeah, let me see this design. Like, yeah, we'll, we'll take a stab at it. And then totally they were just showing off with how they finished this knife. It, it, it's, it's a specimen to behold. It, it's absolutely beautiful. The next observation that I had was the pocket clip, which realizing that this is going to be countersunk into the carbon fiber, I'm not convinced that it actually you know, goes any deeper than that. And, you know, certainly I have not taken this knife apart or down to, to clean it, do maintenance on it, etc. But, you know, like I'm always a little bit hesitant when I see a pocket clip that has one Torx bit. And, um, you know, more to follow, we'll see if it loosens up, whatever. This does carry really well in your pocket, very low profile. It, the other thing was just the amount of Torx bits that kind of hold this knife together. I haven't like counted them out or anything like that, but not only are there a lot of them, but they're all different sizes. You have like, I believe this is a T20 pivot. I, I have tightened it a little bit. Um, then I think you have kind of like a T8, T6s. Like th there's just a lot going on here as far as uh, material goes, which is a little bit different from the SOCOM Delta that, that I owned. I, I do like this one more, but still, I mean, there's no escaping the fact that on this, you, you have a lot of hardware and a lot of, a lot of heads to turn. The last observation that I had were just the amount of like the grips and like what they took into account. Like, I mean, you know, naturally holding this knife. I think the ergonomics are really good. One of my critiques of the SOCOM Delta was just, it was such a thin knife that I really didn't think they took ergonomics into account when making it. But I mean, certainly like the, the jimping back here, you have some jimping under here, you have jimping up top, really nice jimping ramp. And then for a choked up grip, they even gave you a little bonus jimping up here, like right above this, uh, this thumb stud. Um, so I, I think that that's really great. Like they kind of, again, kind of coming back to that theme of them showing off the, the machining in, that went into this knife is, is really impressive. Like I, I think they spent a lot of time at it. So that concludes my overview of the Microtech Socom Bravo. Again, a knife that was designed by Anthony Marfioni, but made by Reich Knife in China. Um, all in all, this is definitely an enthusiast knife. Um, those that have kind of reached enlightenment and are, can, you know, <laughs> just completely utilitarian in your knife use, you, you really won't understand this one. Like there's plenty to point out that could be better as far as like an everyday blade goes, everyday carry, but 
I honestly like I, I love this knife as the sum of its parts. It's absolutely beautiful. There's a ton of pride of ownership there. The action is phenomenal, whether you're, you know, regular flicking this thing or thumb flicking it. I mean, it's it's kind of like obsessive. Like you, you always want to be working the action of this knife. Um, you know, I, I think also all in all, kind of going back to that gas station knife analogy, um, this is like a gas station knife that can certainly back it up and it has a undeniable like wow factor to it. So um, the MSRP on this uh, when it came out was was close to that $400 mark. Um, these do show up from time to time on the secondary for around, you know, 250 to 350. So definitely keep your eyes out. Um, th this knife is, is absolutely awesome. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy that I was given the opportunity to, uh, to check it out. So uh, thanks for tuning in and uh, we will see you next time.